Hello, my name is Nicole Barris. I'm presenting work on performance under pressure in competitive multiplayer video games, conducted with Madison Gorkowski and Regan Mandrick at the University of Saskatchewan. The eruption of esports into the mainstream has vitalized the need to understand performance in competitive gaming spaces. In competitive online games, players are exposed to high pressure circumstances in which performance is crucial. These high-pressure circumstances are incubators for choking and clutching, phenomena widely understood in both sports and esports that broadly address critical failures and successes in performance. Choking describes a scenario in which a player fails to maintain their performance in a situation where it is expected or highly important. These are situations in which players can underperform by playing uncharacteristically poorly or losing badly to a disadvantaged opponent. Kerrigan just going to charge him down. He's going to miss quite a few pistol shots. Kenny S, he picks what? up the kill! Kerrigan should not have put that! He gets the second! Kenny S clutches the round! Oh my lord, that should not happen! Clutching describes a scenario where a player performs well under pressure in an unfavorable situation leading to a desirable outcome. Sometimes these moments of clutch even go down in esports history, like with the famous Evo Moment 37 from Evo 2004. <laughs> While the phenomena of both choke and clutch have been formalized in physical sports, they have yet to be examined in esports, a domain that may lend itself to more opportunities for choke or clutch experiences. One route towards understanding choke and clutch in video games is through self focused models used in sports literature. These models suggest that choking is the result of attention focused inwards due to increases in anxiety. This increase in self-awareness causes the shift from procedural to declarative processing, hindering performance. Declarative processing describes conscious control in the execution of a skill. Declarative processes are harmful to performance as they are slow and rely on the use of explicit rules, for example, learning how to ride a bike. In contrast, procedural processes involved in performing a skill are automatic and require less demand on attentional resources, thus enabling faster processing. Often, as we master a skill, riding a bike for instance, we stop thinking so consciously about the explicit execution of rules and start to do things automatically. Central to our work is the self-focused model of reinvestment, which refers to a tendency to revert to declarative processing in high-pressure scenarios. Some people are more susceptible to this than others, and those high reinvestors are more likely to fail in high-pressure scenarios. However, this is yet to be explored in the context of competitive video games. In our work, we explore the question, what are the underlying mechanisms that contribute to choke and clutch performance under pressure, and how do players cope in these scenarios? We examine this through the application of self-focused models of reinvestment and self-consciousness, while also examining the role of passion and coping styles. We recruited 210 participants with competitive gaming experience from Amazon's Mechanical Turk. Participants are called scenarios in which they had choked and clutched and completed validated trade skills, including the reinvestment scale, which measures tendency to focus attention inwards, the revised self-consciousness scale, which measures public, outward-directed, and private, inward-directed self-consciousness, as well as social anxiety. The coping style in sports inventory, which divides coping styles into approach coping, engaging with the stressor, and avoidance coping, disengaging with the stressor. The dualistic passion scale, which divides passion for an activity into harmonious passion, which is balanced and authentic, and obsessive passion, which is compulsive and inflexible. Participants also completed two custom scales that measure propensity to choke and clutch. We conducted multiple regressions using traits to investigate their relationship with the propensity to clutch or choke. Choking was associated with increased reinvestment, public self-consciousness, obsessive passion, and both approach and avoidance styles of coping. Players with these predispositions are more likely to revert to declarative processes during performance due to increased self-awareness, resulting in choking. Clutching was associated with higher private self-consciousness and lower social anxiety. 
While the finding that clutching is associated with lower social anxiety is intuitive, more interestingly is that players with higher private self-consciousness are more likely to clutch. Players who identify weaknesses as an area for self-improvement rather than self-scrutiny may be better able to recover their performance, thus increasing their ability to clutch. In sum, we find that trait dispositions towards reinvestment, self-consciousness, obsessive passion, and coping influences likelihood to choke or clutch in competitive games. This work has implications for esports training and management. For instance, collecting trade inventories from roster players may help identify those in need of specialized training. Players susceptible to choke may benefit from familiarization with pressure scenarios or general pressure training programs. Our work extends findings from sports literature into esports and suggests that mechanics susceptible to de-automization in physical sports also translate to multiplayer video games. Research that continues to build upon these concepts will equip researchers and esports performance personnel with the tools required to address performance concerns under pressure. Thank you.